Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. Imagine, if you will, a creature emerging from the earth like a wildfire, devouring everything in its path. This creature would put every other species around it at risk as it destructively imbalanced the ecosystem. We've all heard about the emergence of locusts before. In biblical terms, we have many specific verses that point to locusts being one of the many plagues that are sent by God. Locusts are also mentioned in the Old Testament and the Quran as well. Now, for those of you who might not know and count me as one of them before I started this research, there are over 11,000 species of locust or grasshopper in the world today. What I found strange is any type of grasshopper can become a locust. I had always pictured a locust as perhaps something like a cicada, seemingly violent, if not mysterious, with destructive intentions. Little did I know, at any point, any grasshopper becomes a locust when it enters a gregarious phase of the animal life cycle. Most grasshoppers will never reach this stage. However, if conditions warrant it, grasshoppers in the locust stage will become swarming creatures who travel in hordes, migrate, and breed rapidly, destroying all crops in their path. Nowadays, we rarely see grasshopper hordes due to many contributing factors including pollution, the introduction of different farming methods, grasshopper evolution, and the rise in human population. However, throughout the 1800s in the United States of America, we have numerous specific incidents of grasshopper hordes ravaging the plains. So much so, and this is the real shocker for me, we are told part of the reason that the Midwest, to this day, remains more isolated and less populated, less developed than the East and West Coasts and the South, and the main reason that the Midwest experienced a decline in growth in the mid-1800s is due in part to the Great Locust Plague of 1874 and 1875. Now, I'm not going to give you this whole narrative here because I want to keep this video as brief as possible, but when you begin to hear the numbers I'm going to throw out and try to imagine what is being described here, it becomes hard to imagine that this has not been discussed more thoroughly throughout history. So with that being said, let us dive right in. We have roughly 50 million American bison roaming the United States around the time of Lewis and Clark's exploration of America. I love animals, so some of these images and some of this narrative was a little hard for me to share, but by 1841, we are told that nearly 10% of these majestic beasts had been killed for their hides, their meat, their horns, etc. Once most of the Native American nations were armed, and with the advent of railway hunting, bison numbers began dropping even more rapidly. A push across America, which has seemingly been hidden in most modern day history books, alludes to an idea that bison hunting was considered a way to clear the land of indigenous people, as it removed their main source of food. These sinister mindsets and ideology was then pushed upon the American public in the mid to late 1800s. Long story short, by the 1870s, the bison numbers were down below 1 million individuals from the previous estimated 50 million. In return, with not enough new human population to occupy these areas that the bison were once in, and with the Native Americans being driven away, the Midwest began to flourish with new growth and new plants, new life, as the bison had mainly controlled the ecosystem with their vast numbers which consumed the large portion of the new greens. However, with these bison now gone, and the new growth being unaffected by previous disturbances, a new threat was emerging below the surface. Unbeknownst to the public at the time, a monster of biblical proportions now had fertile new land and new growth to lay its hundreds of millions of eggs upon. This monster was known as Melanopolis spretus, or the Rocky Mountain Locust. It had been seen in large numbers years prior, attacking Minnesota in 1856 and 57, and again hitting the Midwest in large numbers after the Civil War. However, what emerged in 1874 was unlike anything ever seen before or since. Dr. Albert L. Child of the U.S. Signal Corps reports Midwest farmers were finding 
150 eggs per square inch within their farmlands. I'm going to take a moment to allow you to quantify that number. Up to 150 eggs per square inch. A farm consists of many acres, sometimes hundreds of acres. Each state having hundreds, if not thousands of farms, even in the 1800s. And it wasn't just the farmland that was affected. Any open land with new growth was susceptible to the locust swarm. We have literally millions upon millions of locusts which began to emerge in the Midwest in 1874, and they were hungry. I'm going to quote the history book directly so you can understand what the people in the Midwest were experiencing in the years of 1874 and 1875. And I quote, In 1875, Dr. Albert L. Child of the U.S. Signal Corps watched a mile-high swarm of locusts pass overhead for five days straight. Together with telegraph reports from neighboring towns, Child estimated the swarm to be 110 miles wide and 1,800 miles long. A total of 198,000 square miles, one-third the size of Alaska or the combined landmass of our 13 smallest states. It was a rolling flood the size of California and Maine put together." End quote. By scientific estimates, this plague of locusts consisted of 12.5 trillion locusts each desiring to eat its own body weight in crops. The swarm was estimated to weigh a combined 27.5 million tons. That's 27.5 million tons of crops, woodland, forests that were all destroyed. This is the largest congregation of any living organisms in recorded history. To try to put the numbers into a perspective that we can understand, roughly one trillion seconds ago, the first clay pots were being fired up in recorded history. It was roughly 29,000 BC. We are talking about 12 and a half trillion locusts in one spot at the exact same time. This locust swarm in its entirety took over five days to pass in one specific area. For five entire days, the sun was blotted out by locusts. Honestly, I can't really fathom how this isn't one of the most discussed and important occurrences in history. We have this event, which was clearly triggered by something. And when all was said and done, the Midwest was completely ravaged. It's basically written that there was nothing left. Zero farms. Zero forests, zero crops. There was nothing but the open plains. I'm truly dumbfounded by reading this information. I know the plains have always been a bit mysterious, but to understand that tucked away in a narrative hidden deep in history is a locust plague, which absolutely shaped the country of America. Is this something that fits into a biblical narrative as well? You tell me. As this narrative continues, we are told that many houses were even knocked down completely by this locust swarm, which is referred to as a hopper dozer, a play on the bulldozer phrase. Entire families had their clothing and their belongings eaten by these locusts after the crops ran out. Most of the population of these areas in the Midwest fled for major cities. This is an absolutely fascinating story, but as we continue, it gets even stranger. We are told Nebraska quickly enacted laws which required all individuals to hunt locusts at least two days a year or face a hefty fine and punishment. We are told many other states then followed suit, enacting similar practices. We are also told the process was met with much success, 
Yet I simply can't seem to wrap my head around the final part of this narrative. The Rocky Mountain Locust. Was it the Biblical Locust? We are told that this Rocky Mountain Locust emerged or was first recorded beginning in the 1800s, at least in America. However, the most information about them comes from this 1874-1875 plague. Now, as the narrative goes on to tell us, this locust mysteriously vanished by the early 1900s. As quickly as they were summoned to Earth, they were taken back to the darkness for which they came. The last recorded Rocky Mountain locust in all of history was sighted in 1902, and today they are considered to be extinct since that time period. Scientists, in this aspect of the narrative, simply can't explain why this happened. To reduce numbers, yes, hunting these species might work to make the numbers dwindle, but to go down from 12.5 trillion specimens, the largest number of any species in one location ever to exist in the world, to have the numbers reduced to absolute zero in 25 years is an aspect of this narrative that I simply can't understand. But I'm going to conclude the video there. This was a fun one to discuss because I was just so shocked by the numbers provided here. To imagine a swarm of locusts that stretch over multiple states, blotting out the sun for days on end, destroying cities and towns completely, it truly makes for something of a myth or a legend. Yet, here we have scientists, even the President of the United States, we have local governments, we have historians, and they're all discussing this locust invasion in great detail. It is a fact that this occurred. Now, why this has never been brought up in modern times, and why this information is seemingly dumbed down, I really have no idea. But I thought the story of the locust swarm of 1874 and 1875 was absurdly juicy and worth sharing with you. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. <sighs> but before we end the video, and on a very somber note, just yesterday I found out I lost one of my closest friends from high school. His name is Stephen Hafner. He was a really great guy who was always there for me with a smile and a reference to a new TV show or a Marvel movie. He was a caring individual who battled his own demons, but he found success. He became a welder, he was a gentleman, and he was one of the first people to ever care about the old world history that I shared with him. I've known him since I was 12 years old, so losing a friend like that is terribly difficult, and I just wanted to take this time to say thank you and to say goodbye to Steven, and I hope that you rest in peace, my friend. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up the video there. Sorry to end it on such a note, but I have to respect my friend and I wanted everyone who watches my channel to at least get to hear his name and to wish his family well. I'm so glad you all joined me today to discuss the crazy history of the Locust Horde of 1874 and 1875, and I'd love to hear your thoughts and your comments about it down below. I look forward to speaking with you very soon, and we will talk on the next video.